This is the story of a scarecrow of a lad born in the shadows of the shipyards of Govan. A fiery young Scot who launched into a career in football and became a success. A very big success. The character is forged by the, the environment. If you think about in the winter here, and the, the wind and the cold come up that quiet, the mouth of the, the Irish Sea into the shipyard area and I'm working on top there. You can just imagine the character is forged. I've always done it with all the clubs I'm with. It's the Mirna the Good Youth Policy, Aberdeen the next one Youth Policy, and now United have an absolutely marvellous uh, youth policy and the development of our young players at the club is outstanding. There's not a thing they don't get or we don't do for them. Uh, and it's a commitment. I decided the airline management, that was where you could get enormous satisfaction. That's where you could build family spirit, team spirit. And I've enjoyed it. Shot! Oh, beautiful goal from David Beckham! There's never been a manager like Brian Club before. Never. And I can't see ever another one like him ever again. If he thought that you were absolutely magnificent, he would hang your hat on you and say, this is it, go and play. But there were other, there were other moments in games where it would be harrowing. You would be, you'd be out trying to prove him wrong rather than prove him right. I heard stories about how he felt at times that he had such a connection with his players that if they were just walking on the pitch, if he thought about it, he could make them turn and look at him. Brian Clough was touched by genius. I don't think there's any doubt about that. He knew it, <laughs> and he made everybody else know it, which made him an unpleasant, difficult guy to be with. There were times when he was obviously under fantastic pressure, but he had that coolness and the ability to handle it all and make it look easy. Great managers are great people in life. You know, they're on the verge. Of, of insanity at times, and I think Brian was, was one of them people, you know, he was, he was touching on the verge at all times. And that might be aiming for utopia, and it might mean being a little bit stupid, but that is the way I am. I'm a little bit stupid regarding this type of thing, I'm a little bit of an idealist, I do believe in fairies, and that is my, you know, outlook. Player, manager, pundit, celebrity, family man, psychologist, pantomime villain. Brian Clough was all of these and more. Pursue him a new, a young with perhaps new ideas and tra a track suited man. Tonight on Panorama, the fraudster who stole a football club and broke a bank. I wanted to believe what he told me, which is everybody's going to be rich out of this, everybody's going to make a lot of money. From royal families to communist dictators, he used the rich and the powerful. What they told me was not million, it was billion of dollars. Football bosses, city regulators and foreign regimes, how could they all be fooled? So who are the individuals with the money? This is not what no. we agreed to the other day. We need to find them. Nobody knows where they are. And they basically ruined our club, really. We are on the trail of the trillion dollar con man. Hello, Mr King.
This is the story of an extraordinary fraud. Celebrities, bankers and politicians were duped. The great, the good and the not so good were taken for a ride. Tempted by tales of foreign gold and two trillion dollars. And it all starts here, at Notts County Football Club. Welcome to Meadow Lane, home of the oldest football league club in the world. Next year is Notts County's 150th anniversary. On their home ground, Notts County in striped shirts meet York City and straight away are knocking on York's door. But the gallant little third division... For most of those years, it's been a struggle for money. The county used to be owned by the fans. But in 2009, the supporters' trust sold it for just a pound. They were happy to give the club away because they'd promised millions would be invested in the team. We believe that we were actually selling it to some very wealthy benefactors in the Middle East. We were given to believe that they were members of uh, one of the uh, uh, Middle Eastern royal families. It wasn't just football fans who were amazed at what happened next. Their first big signing was the former England manager. Sven Joran Eriksson. Here was the world famous Sven, promised a small fortune to join a bottom division club. It's great to come back to England. Sorry. You've signed now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For me as a footballman, it was fantastic. Building a club from bottom of uh, League Two and having the foundings to do it, to be a Premier League club. It's like a, like a dream. So I signed. Big mistake. Knocks County nil, Hartlepool United nil. And Westgar gets the better of it. Slips the ball now to Innes. And he shoots and covers into score. Suddenly, it seemed, the good times had come to Meadow Lane. He made it look easy as he lifted the ball into the roof of the net. Star players arrived, like former England international Sol Campbell. It was all happening so quickly, few stopped to think where the money was coming from. In the beginning, everything was perfect, beautiful. I liked it. When did you begin to have doubts? I started to have doubts uh, when uh, they're coming to me and saying that the milk bill has not been paid. <laughs> the milk bill? Yes. You know, they have milk. The milkman wasn't the only one chasing an unpaid bill. Everything was on credit. And nobody knew who was picking up the tab. The identities of county's new owners were a closely guarded secret. I wanted to know who was really behind the takeover. The front man was the chairman, Peter Trembling, but he wasn't telling. So who were the people, who were the individuals with the money? I thought we weren't going to talk about this. We, we, you're talking about no, you're going completely off what you said the other day. So, Sorry, I'm not, do we I'm want not... to do an interview, or should we just forget this whole thing? No. You, you, this is not what we agreed Peter. the other day. Peter, we're talking about. Mr. Trembling did eventually resume the interview. Exactly. You're talking about football finance. Now you want to talk about individuals, which I'm I think we need to take on, that off from there. Hang on, hang on. Take two didn't last long either. I'm asking you, when's the investment going to come? I don't want to do this interview anymore. I think you've uh, if you tell me why recorded it's wrong. Are you, you tell me why it's yeah. wrong? Why? Since the interview was No, the interview was over. So can you delete that? The guys who are playing this game today are great players. I mean, and, and they, they are the game today, really. But as much as people in the game today would like to believe they are the makers of the game, they are the keepers of the game. The game was made a long time ago by a lot of people. These guys are the foundation, the backbone of what makes this whole thing work.
Hickman pass from Evans when Rodgers' pass is intercepted by Marek Hicks of Georgia. The NFL has become the most attended sporting event in the world. A 2006 survey averaged 67,000 attendees per game, or an astounding 17.6 million seats filled during the season. When a new Hall of Fame class is inducted, an estimated 700,000 visitors flock to the town of Canton, Ohio. This is roughly 10 times the population of the city itself. Current players expect commercial contracts, shoe deals, bonuses, and if they make it to the Super Bowl, players can expect to be watched by 100 million television viewers worldwide. In the next year, this organization, which holds a regular season of only 17 weeks, will make a whopping $7.1 billion. This is not your normal business. This is pro football. You know, this is uh, America's sport. This is a game that people love and they support. The football has gotten to be a very popular game today, and I think we probably have something to do with it. But besides the glory and the fame, there has always been one other certainty in the game of football. Hip replacements, knee replacements, from shoulder my replacements. head down to my toe. There's something wrong. His knees, wrong. his back, his hips. I'm in a hospital now. Football has to recognize that you've got players who have short careers, who get very debilitating injuries. This is a, a unionized industry, um, you know, just like the auto workers or people who work in a chemical plant. There's a, a written agreement that says that if, if you have a disability of a certain type, you're entitled to certain benefits. And once you retire, you're no longer a member of the union. But you are a participant in the pension plan. And under federal law, you have a lot of rights that are given to you. And everybody who's a retired player has a right to be treated fairly uh, by the pension plan when he applies for a benefit.